Hey guys, so tonight I got yet another Game Boy Backlight Kit. Um, surprise, huh? It's almost like you read the title and, uh, you know, inferred what the content would be from that. But anyway, here's what we got. Um, as is apparent, hopefully, this was provided to me by Retro Game Repair Shop. Um, I believe when if you purchase one from them, this is how you get it. I do like that they ship in these nice cases. Uh, unfortunately, DMG isn't going to fit in there, but it is still a good case for a uh, Game Boy Advance or Game Boy Color or something. Uh, but nonetheless, on the uh, contents are what's actually really, are what, what most people care about, I imagine. So there's quite a lot of stuff in here. Do, do, do. So, again, double-sided tape because apparently that's just their thing. Um, it looks like these things are finally coming with a bracket, which is super cool. Uh, I am super okay with that. I don't know if this is a value add from Retro Game Repair Shop or if this is uh, just something that the uh, backlight kit company is is starting to ship with their their kits now uh, one chip as I usually refer to them as but either way super nice this is really cheap but it looks to be injection molded plastic it's not a 3d print or anything and you can see straight from the package it is already warped but it should still be good enough for our purposes uh, we've got the Rear PCB it looks like the exact same thing from the previous iterations, except it no longer has RIPS V3 on the silk screen. Um, but this is, uh, I forget if this is officially the RIPS V4 kit or if this is just, if they're going with something else. No, I guess they're going with something else now. DMG Backlight OSD, that's, that's what they're calling it. You get this conversion board, which looks... Pretty much the same as the previous iterations. Um, I'm going to snap this off because this is a tab that comes from the PCB fab and usually isn't on these things. Um, when they when they make these PCBs, there's you know a whole panel of them and they're assembling them all together at the exact same time and then they just snap them apart. This just means mine was at the end of the panel, because this was the end of the uh, big panel that they made. But anyway, that's irrelevant. There's the conversion board. There is the LCD. This is the BlackBerry Q5 LCD that Funny Playing just started using. Surprise, surprise. Now one chip is using it too. Comes with a glass lens. That is, yeah, that's glass. And this thing. Nice stuff if I do say so myself. Um, so I'm just I'm just stoked that it comes with the uh, comes with a bracket. I mean unfortunately I can't use mine now but that's not great. Ugh. Maybe I'll want to use mine anyway. Well, we'll see what happens. Screw it. Okay. So I'm going to set this stuff aside. And, oh, before I do, I want to take a look at this lens. But, of course, I don't have the one I want to look at. All right, there we go. So I ordered some lenses on AliExpress for the 2.6-inch backlight kit. Um, it's that one that I just did in a pocket very recently in this pocket here. Um, they're making that kit for the DMG. I just wanted to see if these were the same sizes because I had some people ask me and they are the exact same size. So if you need a new lens for your funny playing kit or for your DMG backlight OSD kit or for your uh, 2.5 inch or a 2.6 inch backlight kit. 
They're all the same. You don't know until you know, and now you know, so there you go. All right. Let's go ahead and get started on tonight's donor. This is obviously an amalgam of parts uh, that I just had laying around and put it together to get it out of the way. This D-pad is fucking terrible, but it should be okay. Oh no, this is not going to be okay, actually. I need to go find another Game Boy, because this one has the uh, broken L button. I'll be right back. Don't worry, I found one. This, uh, this thing should work if my notes are any indication. Well, to an extent. It obviously needs help. Uh oh. There it goes. And look at that. I can actually control where character goes. And all the buttons work, so we're good. We'll use this one. Ooh. Set that aside. Oh dear. Oh dear, they all fell out. Okay, well, that's a problem for future Mako. Past Mako is kind of an asshole. He keeps leaving problems for future Mako. This one uses try wing, try point. Oh, good, broken screw posts. I forgot about that. Don't worry, I have another shell. I'm not using this one. In a sense, I have an IPS ready shell. I still got to get the DMG out of this wonderful machine first. All right, I took out three screws, and that came comes apart. I must have removed these for cleaning. Yep. Okay. So that screw post is broken, that screw post is broken. That one is broken. Okay, so this has two not broken of the six. Nice. But, uh. Got another DMG shell to use. This PCB has also obviously seen better days, but it is working, so why screw up a good thing, you know? Got a slightly less yellowed link port cover. Oh, while it's out, I suppose I should do an inspection here. Oh, you know what? I've already been in here. Someone's been in here. No, I was cleaning up the uh, 
screw post or the battery post. Though, if you were reshelling your DMG, I guess you can follow along. Also, conveniently, I don't have to finish taking this apart because we're not reusing any of this front board. Um, I already have buttons. I don't need to use that screen. And I've already got a speaker. Because unfortunately, these kits do not come with a speaker pre-soldered. So if you're still afraid of soldering, which whatever, okay. Um, the kit you can install without soldering, you just won't have a speaker. Everything will work. There will just be no sound unless you plug in headphones. Actually, I think I'm gonna do the shell trimming first. This, uh, the buttons out before I make a mess and lose them all. Oh, that actually doesn't need to be trimmed that much. You can get away with not trimming it, but you will see the screen. You know, when you hold it at an angle, it's not going to look good, so we're just going to go ahead and trim it. Super easy. Super easy. You can do it with a Dremel, but there's an even easier step uh, process. You just need to take a box cutter or other utility knife. Make a score line approximately where you want to cut. And just keep going over the same line until you're relatively deep into the plastic. Do this on all sides. A nice, sharp, fresh blade works significantly better. Highly recommended. Oof. Try not to slip or you'll uh, end up marking up the shell. Try not to mako it. That was way too much, but that's okay. The nice thing about the score lines too is if you screw up too badly, 
you can just make a new score line. So that's what I did here. I cut way too deep and not straight, so I made a second line. Because once the lens is on, unless you're using a clear lens, you won't see any of this. Unless you make a very, very grave error. I think that's good enough. I think we also need some pliers. I'm going to try using my hemostat tool. If it's sufficiently scored, you should just be able to uh, bend it and the plastic will pop off. Usually not literally, but there you go. Oof, that one did not work at all. I need to score deeper, that's what. OEM shells, you need to spend a little bit more time scoring. Because their material is slightly harder. You don't cut through it as fast. I think that should be good now. Try coming up the other side. There we go. All right, all right. Once scored and snapped, if it's not coming off easily, you can just go back in and uh, slice it off. Usually goes pretty easily from there, usually. And then we just gotta clean it up. Break the edges. All 
those little sharp bits from where I hit it with my hemostat tool. Just making sure there's no sharp bits, which I don't believe there are. And that should be it. And this will go on here. Wow, okay, so this shell already has these two screw posts removed and this tab here removed. It looks like those do not need to be removed whatsoever. But, I mean, this, I don't really have a choice in this particular case, but. Just gonna slice that off. I'm gonna leave the film on because, like usual, I didn't actually look at any instructions. Kind of just winging this, figuring it out as I go. And if need be, I'd like to be able to uh, redo things, play around with it. So that goes in there, and there is quite a bit of play. Oh, but I just remembered, I don't think that matters. And you'll see why shortly. Because <clears throat> this kit has a real neat new feature. Oh, we should probably put in some buttons. What do you say? Let's also put in a speaker. Now that my soldering iron has gone to sleep and cooled down completely, You know how to desolder. It's not complicated whatsoever. As far as resoldering, also not complicated, but it looks like they still haven't fixed that really annoying issue where there's no thermal reliefs. So this outer pad is going to be an absolute pain in the see you next Tuesday to Sunday. To uh, solder, excuse me. start talking about Tuesday and all of a sudden I'm thinking about Sundays. All right. Boom. All done. Even though the uh, screen doesn't cover those screw posts, there's no holes in the PCB to put the screws in anyway, so... Thanks, I guess. That's nice. I forget already which screws are which. I think these are for this. Oh man, and I completely forgot to test power consumption. I'm a total monster, aren't I? I know a lot of you don't care, but I care.
That's okay though. Jesus, this cable is a little on the long side. some power consumption. So I've got a front screen, there we go, that you can't see shit on, but it's okay, because it'll work anyway. Now where is my Pokemon Yellow? And now I need a power supply. Probably should have, uh, yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> Just gotta plug things in here because this one is unfortunately not battery operated. Right, I think that'll work. Quick set menu is a pain in the ass to get to. You have to hit. Oh, that's on, isn't it? You have to hit both buttons at the exact same time. There we go. It's set to 4.8 volts, what I usually test at. And turn it on. I have no way of telling if that works. Oh yeah, I can, because it should pull current. And indeed it does. I know that's hard to see, I'm sorry. All right, so this screen might use a little bit more current than usual, because, um, Got some water damage. But we'll make it work. So 4.8 volts, which is what I usually test Game Boys at, original Game Boys. In the overworld on Pokemon Yellow, this thing is pulling 400. 48 milliamps, excuse me, not 400. 48 milliamps, that's it. Get that out of here, get that busted junk. Get it gone. All right, let's plug in the new hotness here. Easier said than done, ugh, heat these things. Alright, that actually went surprisingly smooth. And here goes nothing. Without touching any of the screen controls, we are at 156 milliamps. So, over three times. But, you can click this for uh, pallets. There are significantly more pallets. 
But there's more than that. If we click and hold, we get into this menu here where we can adjust the position of the uh, image on the screen. I mean, obviously, we don't want to do that junk, but get that relatively centered. And we can toggle on and off this pixel grid, which I'm so glad that it's a toggle because I think it's much better off. We have a battery display, which I think is pretty cool. Looks like it's just a small little battery icon in the top left. It's not going to do shit on this power supply, but we'll leave it on for the time being. And then there's this color adjust where we can uh, tweak each of the uh, colors. So we can set, you know, the whites to whatever color we want, the light gray to whatever color we want, the dark gray to whatever color we want, and then the black to whatever color what, whatever color we want. Okay, I don't actually know how to get out of this menu. Okay, you press and hold. I'm gonna leave those as is for now. My light gray and my dark gray are obviously inverted, but that's okay. go back and fix it later but yeah cool shit huh oh and you can reset it back to default that's cool all right so there we go that's at whatever default brightness level this is if you scroll it without pressing any buttons you can set the brightness to whatever you want um, at max brightness it looks like this thing is pulling about 181 100, 182 milliamps and we'll set it down to the minimum and that goes down to 121 milliamps so not not too bad. Not bad at all. Let's, oh, shoot. No, I didn't want to do that. I guess we'll see. I assume it retains the, the settings. That'd be real dumb if it didn't. Uh-oh. Now it doesn't seem to work. I'm guessing this ribbon cable just got a little bit tweaked because, you know, the thing's open and I'm tweaking it. Yeah, there it goes. Alright, so I'm going to turn the brightness up so you can see this little battery display up here. And... Can adjust the battery voltage down and you can see now it's reading low battery I can bring that up we're at five volts five point five five point seven five and six volts good lord it doesn't show a full battery on six volts There it goes. Oh, maybe it just takes a sec. It has to be 
at least 6.19 volts. I'm so sorry, I didn't realize that was out of frame the whole time. Voltage display is right up here. And I can walk through again. See, so five volts shows just under half battery. At 4.2 volts, it shows pretty much empty battery. Let's see where it actually dies. Nope. It reset at 3.7 volts. And now it won't boot. It's just gonna boot loop. Okay, so let's see if it works with the brightness down. Yeah, there it goes. So if you do have a lithium ion battery mod and you're using this kit, you might need a voltage regulator to get the full runtime out of it. And let's test one more thing. The other kits display a test pattern if you power on the if you enable the power supply for the DMG without actually booting it. And I don't see that on here. Let's reset that. Okay. Let me try that one more time. Yeah, doesn't look like there's a test pattern on this thing. That's okay. All right, let's get this thing reassembled, yeah? I mean, this whole time I've been six screws away from finishing this thing. I didn't do this, but because my shell is already IPS ready, I did the uh, trim on this one. I had the two screw post cut, which did not need to be cut, and I had that one support up here cut, which also does not need to be cut. However, I also have this contrast wheel portion cut on a stock shell. It sticks up a little bit. On my shell, I have that trimmed flush. You do need to trim that for this. I suppose, maybe, perhaps, that's one, uh, one thing in favor of the uh, Retro 6 IPS ready shells. You do still have to trim the viewing area, but otherwise it does work um, like this part's already trimmed. You should also, don't have to, but it certainly helps. If you go in here, you can trim these capacitor leads. Try and angle that so you can see. Right under the contrast wheel, that sometimes helps too. I'm gonna crease this cable, make this assembly go a little bit better. Okay. And I have no idea what the tape is for. I don't know why you'd use the tape. Oh, the tape is probably to secure the LCD to the bracket and to secure the PCB to the bracket, which I did neither. Um, not strictly necessary, I guess, but there you go. So, 
smoke them if you got them, I guess. Oops. I don't want to overly stress the screw post, so I'm going to hold it flush until I get all the screws in. Because that ribbon cable is, uh, it's a beast. It's very thick. It's fine to bend, just not repeatedly. Once everything kind of settles in, it should be good. Alright, let's try it out. So I'm using these new batteries in here. Uh, if you're not familiar with how those batteries work, or don't, as the case it may be, um, those are rechargeable lithium ion batteries that output a constant voltage. So, while we can enable the battery display, it's not going to do shit. It's always going to show the exact same percentage until it's basically ready to die. At least on those batteries. On regular alkalines, it should be fine. I guess I can pop the lens on. Why not? Alright, so it's actually absurdly close already to a good position, but we can adjust it, this menu here. This menu can do nothing if your screen is physically askew or at an angle or something, but it will get it centered, so I guess when you're lining it up in the bracket, just you know, line it up with one of the edges and actually tape it down. But y'all don't care about Pokemon. Y'all care about flashcards. Now that's interesting. backlight keeps going out, but the Game Boy's not crashing, so I guess that's a step in the right direction. Let's run my scrolling bars test. Same spiel as usual. When the S in the word scrolling passes on the left-hand side of the screen, the uh, console issues an LCD reset command, which most backlight kits these days are handling very gracefully, but a lot of the earlier ones did not. Uh, even the original screens don't handle it very gracefully. In this case, all it's resulting in is a single dropped frame, which is ideal. It's perfect. The other thing we're looking at with this test is to see if there's any other frame skipping or frame tearing aside from the S, and I don't see anything. Looks great. So let's also test I did notice just now when I hit the reset that it that there was a tear, but I don't that doesn't occur in normal gameplay, so I, I can't I shouldn't fault it. I'm gonna load the regular scrolling bars test without the reset just for verification. And 
Yeah, that looks good to me. Yeah, I did it there again on the reset. But I'm also resetting the console, so I think it, I mean, it might honestly just do that normally. Uh, gradient test. All right, so here's where we can see the uh, different um, color palettes. The built-in ones aren't too great, but you know, it's nice to have them. The uh, coolest feature is by far the uh, fact that you can set oops, set whatever colors you want. And so you can see as I tweak this, it changes it on the screen. You don't have to deal with their crappy palettes if you don't want to. Boom. There's your, uh, there's your DMG colored palette. All right, let's try, try a couple more things. Sorry, I got distracted. That, that's, that's a cool feature. I wonder if I turn the brightness down, if that'll help. Uh, check Zelda, Legend of Zelda, Link's Awakening DX. Now, if I recall correctly, there is some weird glitch on the menu. Uh, with these dots flying across the screen. I don't remember if it's on the original Link's Awakening or on DX, though. I'm not seeing it here, so if it is on DX, this kit doesn't have that glitch. But I don't think it's DX. The other thing we're going to check here is the uh, ghosting on some of the other kits, like Game Boy Advance in particular. If you look at these logs, these posts, as the screen transitions, you can see artifacts all across the top of the screen. That's not there. Another thing we're looking at is this dude's chain. You could see it's flickering. Um, that's unfortunately the best we're going to get. There's there's no real workaround for this. The original Game Boy did not have a way to achieve transparency with uh, sprites. So as a workaround, they just switched the sprite on and off, on and off, on and off, you know, 60 times a second you know, as, as fast as they could, and with the blurry pixel soup mess that the original DMG screen was, that resulted in a nice transparency effect, because the pixel response was just garbage. So on, off, on, off, on, off meant transparency. This new screen is significantly better, so it actually shows you the shortcut that the devs took. There is another issue that I pointed out in um, another one of my videos, I honestly don't remember which, where the top of his head is kind of cut off if you're at the top of the screen. That is just a uh, feature with Link's Awakening DX. It doesn't matter. That's that's not a bug with the kit. That's literally the game doing that. Um, but otherwise, this looks great. So I just want to test one more thing here. Well, two more things, I guess. The first one my backlight still goes out. Even at low brightness, let's set it all the way. Oh, that was almost all the way down. I'm gonna try out Pokemon Silver. 
and I'm just gonna walk around for a minute. I'm not just testing the screen with this test. Um, I'm also testing the button responsiveness. You know, just walking around making sure I can do what I can do, what I need to do. Um, a Super Mario game would probably be better for this, but this lets me test the screen too on something that I consistently test this stuff with. And I, I don't see any issues. So yeah, I'm genuinely pleased with this kit. This is pretty nice. Um, before I leave off though, I did flash this Game Boy earlier. And it has batteries in it. I just wanted to show we can compare the uh, we can compare the V3 with the V4. These wonderful mushy buttons. And you can just see how much bigger the display is. It's I mean it's not a huge difference, but it's enough, you know you notice it. Side by side looks better I think. Um, yeah, that's all I got. It looks like the screen is not flush. Thanks Luke. Okay, sorry. Um, it looks like they copied some features from that moon screen kit I did a little, a little while back. The difference being that they're using a completely different LCD than that kit, at least. Uh, they, they copied the idea from Funny Playing to use this particular LCD, and they copied the features from that moon screen kit. So, honestly, I think it results in the best of both worlds, because that... The LCD used in this thing is absolutely gorgeous. It is, it's it's a really good LCD. Um, color palettes notwithstanding. Oh, does that? Yeah, that does. That overwrites whatever palette you set it to. That's cool. Cause this already had a, um, you see there's two pea soup palettes as I'm cycling through. That's pretty cool. Obviously this one's mine. I didn't pay too much attention to the... There we go. We'll try out theirs. Oh, mine looks better. Yeah, mine looks way better. So there, you can tweak that shit, set whatever color palette you want, and then just cycle through all of them. I don't think there's a way to reduce the amount of palettes, so you're kind of stuck cycling through all 12 of those or whatever it is. But yeah, that's, that's super cool. This is a really nice kit. I like this. Yeah, and I see no issues. So I'm going to shut that off before I play it all night. Um, I like this kit. This is really nice. Um, I'll post a link to my bracket in case you want to use my bracket instead. I really don't know why you would. I'll also post a link to Funny Playing's bracket that they developed, which if this kit comes with a bracket, don't, don't bother. Just use the bracket it comes with. It's fine. As long as you get the screen in there straight, it doesn't matter at all the positioning because you can just adjust it in the kit. This, that's, oh man. It only took them, what, four different iterations at least? But yeah, this is, this is great. So I, I got to cut off here, man. Uh, otherwise, I'll just ramble and waffle on all night. Um, thanks again to Retro Game Repair Shop for sending me this kit to check out. Um, 
they're a really cool shop. They've always been really good to me. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm going to say that. They keep sending me free stuff to play with. But they've genuinely been really good to me, um, helped me out with a few things, helped me out with a few projects, helped me uh, get started selling some things of mine, um, like my battery mod. That's super cool. For full transparency because of how I just worded that, I'm not selling it. They're selling it. I just think it's cool that someone's selling it. Um, I'm actually not making any money from that battery mod by choice. Um, I gave it away for anyone to sell as they please. Um, so I'm not, to be clear, I'm not butthurt or anything about that. I, I think it's super cool. And yeah, they've been a really helpful shop. So I'll, I'll throw a link down there. Um, check them out. There is also a promo code if you do end up buying from them. I completely forgot it and it was on that card that I flashed at the beginning so just go scroll back to the beginning and check it out um, but anyway yeah I don't know I, I have nothing else to say I actually no two more things to say god I say that and then I just keep going um, in the link in the description there's going to be a link to a spreadsheet that I am continuously updating with all of my backlight kits uh, that I measure the brightness of the screen itself and the power consumption difference. Not just the power consumption, we, we're only looking at the difference because every console is going to be a little bit different in that regard. So with that difference I can then calculate the projected battery life. So if the original screen used 50 milliamps and this one uses 150, you know, the projected battery life is 30 percent, you know, something like that. It's easy enough to estimate uh, to give you actual real-world numbers, um, or excuse me, real-world estimates. So if you used to get 30 hours, now you'll get 10 hours, something like that. Um, obviously, it's it's never that clean cut, but those are just examples. Also in the description, I will have a link to something. I've completely forgotten. I, I lost my train of thought. Um, ah, yes. There's also a document that I'm maintaining that has all of my, you know, quick notes on backlight kits. Um, obviously, I'm going to put this in there, and I'm only mentioning it because I think this is going to take the place of my recommended kit for Game Boy, the original Game Boy. I have it broken down each section by different consoles, so Game Boy, then Game Boy Pocket, then Game Boy Color. And then each section has, you know, a summary right at the top with... My recommendation, you know, if I'm building a new console, this is the kit I'm looking at. Um, and then, you know, just a quick summary of the features throughout the different kits. Like, does it require soldering? Does it require cutting the shell? Um, does it have brightness control? Stuff like that. Um, are, there, are there graphical issues? You know, does it drop frames? Shit like that. There will be a link in the description to that as well. Um, also in the description, one more thing. Like usual, I have a link to all those test ROMs. That's um, that's going to be right on top there. And yeah, that's all I got now, finally. So I will let you guys get back to it, doing whatever you were doing. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the description. But otherwise, that's it. Thanks for watching.